everyone. I've come back over. Sunday, it's still raining, everyone's watching TV, so I thought I'd come back over and do a bit more, get a bit more off this engine. And the sooner the better, then we can get it off to the, to get it line board and checked and whatever else we're going to do. So I'll start by pulling off the spark plug tubes here and um, or the lead tubes. And then I'll probably just lift the intake manifold off today, anything associated with that. So. That's that's the go at the moment. I'm sort of just a learning curve as I go. I never, as I said before, never played with these before. Very limited knowledge, only what I've been told. So we'll start by doing that. <coughs> I want to give a shout out to a a young bloke, a 13 year old bloke. His name's Lincoln Brown. He um, he took interest in my channel and he saw me working on one of the Cub Cadets I had here for another bloke, and he collects garden machines himself, lawn mowers and garden tractors and that sort of thing. He's got a channel going called Aussie Garden Tractors and More. He's only just started out and he's trying to grow it and he asked me to give him a shout out. So for those of you who are interested in those lawn machines, I know there's a few of you because you've commented on, on the ones I've had in the background here. I haven't featured many on here but it has been a couple in the background. And I think there was one where I was working on one. So go over and check him out, support him. He's doing a I've watched a few episodes now, I've only got to, just started watching it. Um, he's one of those blokes that, when I mentioned, if you've got a channel yourself, share it and I'll return these favours, so, which I'm more than capable of doing, or I like sharing, so. Go and check him out and see what you think of that and give him a subscription and a comment. And he, he, um, he seems to know what he's talking about for a young bloke and, and on those little machines, so. And he said his dad may possibly be able to get me a set of windscreens for my slimline Transstar, the 4070 one, the white one out there. So that'd be great if that could happen. I mean, I haven't looked too far for those. But, um, if you can't, well, that's, that's no problem. I'm just back to where I am. But if you can, great. Um, he's in Queensland, these, these blokes. So the shipping wouldn't be... I wouldn't care what it costs to get a set of those. They're fairly rare here, so... Anyway, go and check him out. And he's only just started again, so be patient. And he's pretty, pretty good. So anyway, back to pulling this apart. If you see me having ear earphones in, I um, I'm going to listen to something through those while I'm doing it, because if it's heard through here, I get I get uh, copyright email, so I don't want that. So if you see cords hanging in my ears, I'm not being ignorant. I'm just. Uh, I just want to listen to something because it's quiet over here apart from the rain, so the road's quiet today after that accident. It's been, going to be closed for the next few hours. Start by taking all these leads off here. I haven't brought a bench up yet to, to um, sit all these bits and pieces on. I'll just sit them on the floor when we bring the bench up next week. I'll I'll start putting them on that. This will all be replaced and retimed and all sorts of stuff, so none of this is really going to matter what sort of order it's in. <coughs> I've been writing up, I don't know how all you other blokes do it, but when I, I rebuild um, Caterpillar bulldozer transmissions and, and uh, dump truck transmissions and diffs and front end loader transmissions and this is how I always do it, I always keep all the parts bags every Caterpillar part comes in a bag three times the size of it so I, I keep all the packets and put them all in the tray, write, you write your bits and pieces on there, they're plentiful where I get them from at work so I just bring a handful home, they only go in the bin anyway so sort of use them a second time rather than just throwing them straight out just helps when you put it back together rather than some blokes throw it all in one big bucket and then struggle with it. But each to their own. <clears throat> I am going to use a battery gun for this. Some some of you may not like it. I'm not a fan myself, but I sort of want to speed up the process a little bit. Some bolts don't matter, head studs and, and uh, crank bolts and that I certainly wouldn't use them, but 
intake manifold and things like that I will. Only 38 UNC so nothing can really happen. Unless they're seized to start with then I'll just cut them out, in, uh, drill them out anyway. So. something about these I'm it obviously didn't do it because they've been produced by the millions but um, I know in the later silicon high high tension or high suppression leads that overnight if you lift the bonnet on an old say a you know an old Cleveland or an old Holden or a Chevy or whatever the earlier 70s cars you can see a blue blue spark running down the entire length of the lead and I just don't know how they'd go in these tubes all tied together. I know some of the later ones had a plastic clip and they were separated, they just clip into it and they were separated. With these running through a tube, maybe the old copper leads, because these are old, old copper ones, um, maybe they didn't do it. But I know you sort of wouldn't do that to a late model lead, but let me know what you think. <coughs> I had an old 351 Cleveland here in a 73 Falcon and if you lifted the bonnet on it after dark you could see just a, a spark running down each and they were brand new. I've seen it on plenty of old cars now, that sort of thing. If anyone has any knowledge of these, please share it. I get a lot of smart-ass remarks, but I don't, I don't listen to those. But if, you, if you're more than willing to give me a positive comment, I'm, I'm all ears, because I certainly don't know. I don't know everything, and I don't know much about these at all. I'm just learning as I go along. If anyone has got any hints or tips or anything on these, please share. <coughs> a lot of you are mainly truck and tractor blokes, but... I do get the I do get a lot of comments when I've started the other flatheads up I've got here, so quite a bit of knowledge out there of these old things. I do believe they crack easy and drip water out of the exhaust manifold, so I hope that's not the case with this one. They reckon they a lot of, most of them do it, it's just how bad it is, but again time will tell we're gonna get it tested. Someone's had a 12 volt coil on her. She's fairly agricultural, that bracket. But... We're putting a 12 volt upgrade system in it, I'd imagine. That'll go well on something else. This has got to be reliable if we're going to run up the bottle shop in that weather when she's going. As long as it gets there and we get the box, we can, we can break down anywhere then as long as we've got that with us. Not sure if a 12 volt conversion kit would come with a, a, uh, a 12 volt generator or anything can be done to make them 12 volt, I don't know. I've seen alternators put on them. Um, not sure I want to do that, it doesn't look original. Club stuff you've got to have mainly mainly standard anyway. And they, they don't like too many. I didn't have to take that right off, I didn't know slotted at the bottom. Um, <coughs> club registered stuff has to be stock standard, which 90% of stuff club registered isn't stock standard because they don't last, last that long. Everything's got to be modified to keep it going for all those years. So. A lot of stuff is anyway. Oh, I might pull that off just to clean it. I definitely need a new fuel pump and leave the car be cleaning out. So I may as well do all that now. Pull it off and separate it all.
can just want to play. Maybe it does.
There we go, everyone. <clears throat> As I said, first, no knowledge of these. I just started, first time I've ever really worked on one. But As you have worked on them, you know exactly what I mean. But that bolt was in there in that old, old water pump, and copping all the coolant. So, thank God it came out. Fair bit of rust in that inner. Coolant in the old days was probably non existent in, these, in this thing. It's just been running farm dam water, probably. Tank water, something like that in her. Both the same, I'd imagine. It'd be good to give the block a good flush out. The 
get her all cleaned and put new ones of those on it anyway. Fairly similar. That one's locked up though. It's got a broken, broken pulley out as well. That's a 38 UNC bolt and that should have been 9 16 I've hammered a single hex half inch impact socket on there to grab it, how much he's rusted down. I think these distributors, well the one outside is, is uh, dual points, so I believe they take a bit of setting up, you need some sort of old machine. I could be wrong, but that's what you research and what you hear, what the fuck's going on here? So the bushes and everything are in there, I might have to get it done up anyway, but like one of those old distributor testing machines. Again, any points, tips, or whatever you've got, advice for these old, old distributors and anything in this engine at all, let me know. Insider. Yeah, twin points. Not in bad order. Fairly pretty sealed, but a little bit. Problem there with that one, the spring's broken on it. That's held open all the time. That one there's not moving at all. I believe there's a technique in setting those up again. Let me know if you know anything about that. It all feels pretty tight, there's no moving that bush or bearing or whatever the, they run in them. And imagine that's a hole for your vacuum advance, It'd be an actuator there. Okay. 
condenser, I'd imagine. Fairly basic equipment apart from the twin points. There you go. Get this big pulley off of now. Let's move this back there a bit. inch and five sixteenths or something like that. Socket set jumps. The learning curve. Not really sure how tight these are meant to be. Whether it's tapered, I don't know. By the time your comments come through, I'll probably have it off. I don't want to bend that. Too hard to damage that. It's not tapered, it's just stuck on all that old oil and shit. She is there.
fucking even know. It's covered in shit, but it's not. I believe from my my basic research being Google and <coughs> and YouTube that these are some sort of plastic, possibly Bakelite. Certainly looks like it. It looks in good good condition too. She's fairly sludgy inside, but. Just going to pull the, well, hopefully get the valves out of it, um, and then roll it over and take the, well, pull the camshaft out, and then roll it over and take the sump off and get the undo the con rods and take the pistons out, and then lift the crank out, and obviously the oil pump and everything, and that'll be pretty much it. Then it'll be cleaning and probably remove all the head studs because of the machine shop, and we'll go from there. Just thought I'd come over, it's Friday night. Um, I got home an hour early today, it's a long weekend. I've got four days off now, but I've got plans the rest of it, most of it anyway, so. I will um, excuse the phone, it's a ring doorbell. So I thought I'd come over and have a couple of bevies and um, do a bit more on this since I can't do it tomorrow, but things may change, I might be able to do a bit more, but we'll, we'll do an hour or so tonight, so. I'll now turn it around and show you what we're going to do. Again, it's all a learning curve for me if you've watched the last videos. So looking down in there, she's fairly sludgy. Um, I've been watching a few blokes do it just on other YouTube channels and they've got like a bar with a fork and it compresses that spring so you can get this little clip here out and if you can see, oh, there's one there, probably easier. Camera to focus in on it, that pops out then the whole valve and spring assembly comes out so. Plenty of caterpillar engines and bigger engines, holder holding engines, smaller stuff. I never one of these, so never a side valve. Had them apart, but not not a full rebuild. So see if we can't make something up to get those clips out and slide the valves out. I might even number them, even though that's probably not the right thing to do. I might just number the top. It's good to know where they come from and inspect them as they come out. With other valves, I generally put them in a sheet of cardboard and number them. But of course, with the whole assembly, I might just put a number on them. And you can go back and if one looks a bit funny, you can have a look, even though it's all getting machined. So. Given all the tops of the valves are clean. Of chalk in your white text is dry as a camel's turd, so I've got to, this will rub off fairly easy, but it's better than nothing.
Okay, I'll just compress one. Got that clip there out, just with a screwdriver. I mean, it's not pushing, I guess, evenly on the spring like the like the proper tool should, but that clip is out. <clears throat> now, I don't know if they're stuck in the block or they're... Oh, I'm doing it wrong, but... I'd say it's just stuck there with that clip off. It's probably sacrilege. <coughs> How else do you unstick that? So there it is there. Assembly. I believe you take that clip off now, slide that off, and then that'll let the, the guide fall apart. I'll actually keep those together for the time being and do them all separately, but now we've got to do that 15 more times. But you get the idea of it. For those of you only learning like me, for those of you know, just ignore this. But There you go. That's the actual guide. There it should spring. I'd say the reason the clip stuck as well because the it's not letting the, the guide come free enough to drop down and get the clip out. It's still loaded. Just what I think about, I don't know if I showed you this before. You see the rust down that inlet port there. That leads to the actual cylinder that was locked up and the reason we're pulling this out. With the truck it's got a seam down the middle of the bonnet and it's not, <clears throat> there's no sicker flex or drip check or anything in that seam so the water's been dripping through it and because of the V8 the carburetor's right in the middle it's directly under it and the air cleaner wasn't on it. Even if it was, it would have just gone around and filled up the indent where the nut is and dripped in. And, and this valve, particular valve here, I don't know if it was open or it seeped around it, but that, that's the one that copped it and she locked that, that exact cylinder up. So that's, that's the cause of it all there, even though it's probably worn out anyway, but it wasn't really our intentions to rebuild it. This is 
really painful to get the right tools. I just sprayed it all, trying to loosen, loosen some of that sludge up and it's made it worse. So I've got two more out, <clears throat> I had to destroy the clips because that guide is meant to slide down a little bit once you take the weight off the spring. To clear the clip of this indent in the block here, to let, let it come out, and they're not doing that so I just had to put the vice grips onto them and drag them out of there. But now, they're not going back up either so they're seized in the block. I'll either spray them overnight or try a little bit of heat, but I don't want to crack anything. I've got them soaking now in some good stuff, but the exhaust ones seem to be freer than it's like every one of these has got obviously had water in. If that carby buddy, there's only trace of water in one, but if that carby had water in, it's obviously gone down every one. Looks like rust, but that's the only one that clear signs of it, but they don't, none of them look good, so <clears throat> if, the, if the water's been around those, those uh, valve guides, they're going to be rusted in there. <clears throat> 